So planning is in uh, full swing for Model World Live, our brand new show at the NEC on April 27th and 28th, 2024. And uh, I'm joined today by Pete to talk out about our centerpiece layout, which is an expansion of the making tracks layout. Yeah, some extension. Definitely. So when you said you wanted a big layout, well, this is big. Yes, I mean, because we're going bigger again, aren't we? We're going bigger again. So uh, we said we wouldn't do it, but to go over 200 feet was the challenge. So uh, for the show next April, we're going to 208 feet in one straight line, eight feet across and 30 feet the other way. So it'll, it'll be 245 feet of scenic modelling. So there'll be two new stations and a fiddle yard. So what are these new stations you're going to build for this year? We're going to build Watford Junction, Bushy, <laughs> and we're doing a special little feature because again, it, it's not, never been done before. We're going to build Blissworth, which is two track. So you'll come out of Killsby Tunnel or you'll go into Killsby Tunnel. You will not see the slow line till it comes back in at Milton Keynes. So it'll be very typical of what the reality is. So, so yes, yeah, so we've got a lot of new features to build. Yeah, and, and a lot of new trains to build. A lot of new trains to build. Yeah. And not many months to do it in either. No, um, we're confident we can do it. There are huge, huge problems. and. That's, it must be set up and at some point tested. Now, where can I find 208 feet of square building that I can put this up for four days while we, you know, while we can test it? So it'll be, it'll be seat of the pants stuff. Um, but I don't, we've got, we're gonna incorporate some brand new ideas. And uh, again, the response that we got at, at Gitz was phenomenal, phenomenal. One of the problems we all know was you couldn't get near the layout. Well, here at the NEC, we're not going to have that problem. So no. hopefully we can you know, get people to actually, and at 208 feet, that's a lot of people. It certainly is, yeah. And we've also expanded the aisles around all the making yes. tracks layout as well. It's got much more space space for people to yes. move around the layout as well. Um, much easier to get in and park here as well with all the parking outside. So we'll be able to get everyone to the layout to see it. Well, you know, I've been around here today. You know, this is, uh, this, I've been to 53 of these at Wally, and I've only ever missed one. This is the first show I've ever done where I haven't had a stand. So I've been around buying stuff up for the layout because we're going to have four nine car pendolinos, two 11 car pendolinos. So we'll have the Pride and the Earth pendolinos. So we're going out to really be different from it, you know, the, the, so that it's like when you see it, we're up to have some of the brand new West Midlands trains as well which we're working on at the moment, which will be the first ever seen. So with it being so much bigger, you know, it, it was massive when we went to the Great Electric Train Show. Have you got more challenge when it comes to actually driving the trains and operating it? Yep, there's a whole different challenge because to go up the front of the layout will take eight minutes. And so if it takes eight minutes, that means you've got to have at least another one behind you. So I've designed it so that one can stop at uh, Milton Keynes, right, and one stop at Watford, which is what they do early morning. And then the Watford train overtakes the Milton Keynes train. And then we put another train straight through and it, it you know, becomes the bi-directional then works. But of course that's got, you've got to have in the region of about 25 operators to do this, you know, and uh, this is a challenge, which we're going to chuck also actually. That we haven't quite worked out how we're going to do it, but we're going to look for associate members. So if you want to become a driver or a member that just turns up to shows and wants to be, at, we're also going to form that sort of club. So the rail nuts as such will be the rail nuts, but there'll also be a rail nuts, or a rail nuts ex auxiliary. And so then, but there's also challenges in the build as well, aren't there? You, oh you, yeah. You, you're now not just going in a straight line down the front, you've got the curve around the end as well. Yes. And you're actually going to build a viaduct in, on the way into Bushy as well, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, I wanted, I didn't want, the one thing I've avoided with all these layouts is straight line. And of course, as you saw it gets, it's, it's very complicated. I wanted to go around that curve, yeah. you know, and nobody's really perfected how to get around the curve and make it look realistic. And there's still challenges to do yes. that, but in my head, I think I know how to do it. Uh, and down to Dave's, you know, woodwork. This is an enormous layout, it's enormous. Yes. So all the other big layouts that there's been are not like this. You know, they're either other railways joined in together uh, this is this is a scenic set. It's not it's it's not a, um, a fictitious site. It's actually what you can go and see now. You go to Watford, you can go to Bushy, you go to Milton Keynes, 
and you stand on the station and you go, this is Milton Keynes. Now, that's what we set out to do. Not do a sort of station, but somebody walks in and goes, oh, I was sitting there this morning. That, and that's the challenge, yeah. is to make it that people that travel on it or, or live near there can go and instantly go, I know that. I used to live just there. So how do you actually do that? So actually to create these scale models of the real places in the time you've got available, it's, it's a massive challenge, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, we've, we've, we, from day one, we've had this challenge and we've, we, know, we know which parts to push uh, and which parts to, to take slow. We know now exactly, you know, how, how difficult things are. So with Phil, and you know, we all use Phil, uh, he's already doing cardboard cutouts for all my stations. So as soon as I get home tomorrow, we'll start to build those boards and I can move the station around to fit the track work. So that's your, that's your, your big part is planning your catenary, your base joints and where your station fits. Because yeah, yeah. that's, you can't move that. No. You know I mean, we, we learned that in Milton Keynes. Milton Keynes, Aaron's overhead wiring, he's sensational. But he's the only one that can do it. Yes. You know, yes. it's so complicated, yes. um, and you can't. You know, we need to put this off in a, in a reasonable time. Because yes. you know, Chris and all the boys have got to get the trains running, put all the registrations in. So we've learned that from Gets. We've learned that we have to do more preparation before we get there. So you're only in another 57 feet, effectively. Yeah. Which, you like know. we were talking about earlier, it's not just an extra 57 feet of baseboards. That's four times the amount of track. Yeah. It's also 24 more signals. Yeah. Um, all the new buildings, all the new structures. Well, it's seven tracks of eight tracks, right? That's the way to look at it. You've got, yeah. in your fiddle side, in, yeah. you've got eight tracks, so yeah. that's, that's seven boards of that. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's like 560 straights. Yes. You know, so, everything's in <laughs> everything's enormous, in numbers, en yeah. enormous yeah. proportions. Yes. Like it's four, 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 I think it's like four kilos of ballast. You know, it's like, five litres of PVA it's, and, and you've got to do it like that because you have no time to do it any other way you have to sort of hit it in one big hit you know I mean I have to be able to go in there at sort of eight o'clock in the morning hammer the cork down and go back two days later when it's dry and literally mark the track out pin the track down and start to, to do the ballast and we, you know that's but you get yourself into a work routine and it works. And then we got the guys, you know, if you work out, I worked out there's something like 500 trees we've made so far. Yeah. Well, we're doing about another 300. Yes. You know, yeah. so you're thinking, this is, this is, this is fantastic. What we've got, you've got to say, we have to have this finished by April the 1st. You know, yeah. we're looking here December next week. Yes. I'm busy with my musical at the moment, so yeah. I can't do much in December. No. We don't finish at um, Blakemere till you know, second week, first week in January. So yeah. I can't really start getting stuck in five days a week till the first week in January. It's going to be a busy start to the year. Yeah. Um, we'll be following along, keeping up with Pete and the team on everything that's happening with the making tracks there and the run up to the Model World Live show. We've got advanced tickets on sale now at keymodelworld.com forward slash Model World Live. Together with more details about other exhibits joining the show, that includes model railways, scale model exhibits, and we'll have much more to tell you about the show in the coming weeks as well. Can and, I just uh, tell you what it's going to be called? Yes. It's called The Final Frontier. To boldly go where no modelers have gone before. For a reason. The Final Frontier. So, so you can see that at Model World Live on April 27th and 28th, 2024, here at the NEC.